Those of you who have been on my channel before may have noticed that I've got a brand new hairstyle. And that is the topic of today's video because this hairstyle, as pretty as it is, is not actually what I went in to get. I had such a negative reaction that I got home, took my hair out, and I had to call somebody else to come and fix it. But the recent experience has just got me thinking about these stylists, makeup artists who market themselves and grow on Instagram. So my experience got me thinking, why are they like this? Why do they do this? And why are we as customers putting up with this behavior? That is the topic of this video. So the first problem is even getting your foot in the door to book an appointment. Oh my God, the amount of messages that I have sent to Instagram hairstylists, makeup artists, lash techs, nail techs, never to hear from them again. I don't know what happens to my messages. Does it go off into the black hole, sucked in into some unknown vortex? Who knows? Or is it just sitting there in some person's inbox, never answered? I just think if you run a business, that is one of the cardinal sins that you can make is to ignore your customers. Okay, I get the fact that, especially if you are quite a popular or well-known Instagram account with lots of followers, you will get lots and lots and lots of messages. Not only will you get messages from genuine customers, but you'll get trolls and people that are just having a laugh. But that's still not an excuse because that might be the difference between turning away a customer who's gonna be prepared to pay tens, hundreds, even thousands of pounds or dollars worth of services and then go on to become a lifelong customer. It really gets on my nerves when I see stylists and they're all over the influencers like a rash, commenting, liking, following, engaging, but yet you message them and it's crickets. You have to message them two times, three times to even get the basic decency of a response. If you are doing that, you need to stop that immediately. It is so not a good look. And I pay a lot of attention to that because what it shows is that you're only paying attention to me when there's something that you get out of it. Let me tell you this, it's the average person that will be your bread and butter. They actually are what determines the success of your business. Why is it that I need to have a law degree to be able to understand your rules and regulations? Are you for real? I just wanted to get my hair done. I didn't mean to sign a contract in blood, binding myself to giving away my firstborn child if I happen to be one minute late. I understand that in the world that we live in, there are some crazy clients. But when you're having pages and pages of paragraphs and lists upon lists of what somebody should or shouldn't do, you're now verging on the ridiculous. And then let's get onto the issue of the non-refundable deposit. Child, this has been the topic of many an argument between a hairstylist and their clients. Let's just go on to what is a non-refundable deposit and whether or not deposits can be non-refundable in legal terms. First of all, let's start off with what is a deposit and how does it differ from a booking fee or any other administrative charges? A deposit is a down payment on a service that you will be getting in the future. It's a contract which is legally binding. It doesn't have to be written. It can be made verbally or in writing. By paying the deposit, a contract has been made between you and your client. If the client is not able to honor their end of the bargain, provided that the terms of the contract are fair and reasonable, you get to keep the deposit. If your contract is not deemed to be reasonable or you cancel as the stylist, the customer is entitled to ask for a refund. 
and this is regardless of whether or not you put the words non-refundable by the very virtue of you calling it a deposit that means that the set of rules that control it is different it is not enough to take a deposit and not mention any specific things and then come back to the customer and say sorry your deposit is non-refundable that's not a reasonable contract and that customer has every right to challenge that because you didn't tell them when they were booking. So knowing this in legal terms, nothing gets me more annoyed and more angry when I see stylists refusing to issue a refund for a service when they've been the one to cancel or delay the plans. How do you have any right in keeping my money when you've been the one to cancel the service? We all understand that emergency happens, life can be uncontrollable i get it but be willing to give people their money back sure you can offer them the option of another appointment or you can try to make alternative arrangements but be aware that the customer has no obligation to accept that especially when it comes to things like having your hair done or having your makeup done usually it's for a specific occasion so you cancelling and then saying, oh, I'll book you in for a week's time. That doesn't mean anything to me. That's useless to me. I needed to have my hair done today. I don't need it done next week, next month, next year. Hence, I want my money back and you should give it to me. I'm so used to Instagram stylists having a long list of rules about how I should act or what I should do but it seems like when it comes to them <laughs> there is no limitations on what they can do they can turn up late there's no charge they can take a break anytime in between doing my hair to go and do somebody else's hair they can eat whilst they're doing my hair and there is no consequence to that that doesn't seem fair the same things that you're asking me to do you should be doing too We've all been there go to a hairdresser and you get there at nine o'clock because you mustn't be late you're gonna be charged a hundred dollars for every 60 seconds that you're late you get there at nine o'clock and where is the hairstylist yeah if you're even lucky to have your hairdresser start on time that's not where it ends because they might have double booked, triple booked, quadruple booked and they've asked four or five people to turn up at the same time as you. And it's disrespectful to me as a customer. I have paid for your time and I have paid for your service. One of my friends made a joke the other day that she would just like to find a hairdresser that actually did hair. At the time we all laughed and we thought it was funny but it's the truth. It seems like increasingly basic service is regarded as an extra your hair must be washed before treatment detangled deep conditioned sectioned braided cornrowed twisted but if i'm gonna do all of that before even stepping into your salon i might as well just do my hair i am fed up of the amount of times i have dealt with plain rude behavior your job is providing a service to a customer why do you have to be rude why do you have to be mean mugging the whole time as if i'm an inconvenience if that's the case don't invite customers don't do your services just close up shop and go home you have to treat people with some dignity and respect that's just fundamental so what do you guys think Feel free to share your Instagram stylist horror stories and we can all commiserate. Whilst you're here, why not get comfortable and I'll make sure to link some other videos that you might want to check out.